it's winter in Antarctica, and a group of scientists are studying the frozen wasteland. Then, while battling howling winds and blistering cold, they make a perplexing discovery. According to the team's high-tech gadgets, a colossal hole has opened up in the sprawling ice sheet nearby. It's a chasm so enormous, several hundred miles across, that it has to be viewed from space to really take it all in. The experts are suddenly left with some serious questions to answer. Firstly, how on earth did the gap get there? But more importantly, should we all be concerned? Giant, mysterious hole in Antarctica's ice has scientists stunned. We've been hearing for some time now that the ice in the Arctic is melting. But even so, enormous holes, especially on this scale, aren't an everyday occurrence. We're talking here about a space of more than 29,000 square miles, which is broadly similar to the size of Austria. Surely an ice chasm of that scale can't be good news. But while the massive hole has scientists confused, other species have almost certainly celebrated its presence. You see, sea mammals such as whales and seals are known to live in the area despite the extreme conditions. And these creatures need to come up for air from time to time, meaning this break in the ice was likely a welcome one. For us humans, though, the void represents an unexpected mystery. How is it that so much ice managed to simply disappear in the midst of the long Antarctic winter? After all, the continent barely sees daylight at that time of year. So rapid melting because of the sun's rays seems unlikely, but experts had come across a similarly unusual phenomenon not too long before. While it's a rarity for Antarctic researchers to find holes like this during winter, especially ones of this size, they'd actually encounter another strange void in the ice. So, are these things forming more frequently nowadays? And if that's the case, what might this mean for the continent and the world more generally? Antarctica and the wider planet are intrinsically linked, even if that doesn't always seem the case. Given the icy continent's otherworldly landscape and location, the vast and barren place can seem far removed from most human life. But its isolation and distance don't cancel out its enormous global impact. One that scientists have been concerned about for quite some time now. About half a century ago, experts noticed the ozone layer above the continent was breaking down. The ozone hole appeared in the skies above the continent, allowing more ultraviolet rays to hit the planet's surface. Even more troubling, the puncture varied in size from one period to the next. It was a significant development, as the ozone is responsible for protecting us from UV radiation. UV radiation damages both flora and fauna, although Antarctica generally lacks both. Still, that doesn't mean living things are immune to any potential damage inflicted by the ozone hole. Australia and New Zealand aren't terribly far from the frozen continent, and it's possible that their inhabitants could be affected. So, might Antarctica's latest huge hole pose a similarly grave threat to these populations? Well, less is known about the colossal void in Antarctica's ice than about the breach in the continent's ozone layer. Scientists have spent years studying the atmospheric event, taking note of the many dangers it posed. Then, after it was found that chemicals such as chlorofluorocarbons CFCs, were largely responsible for the ozone hole, a treaty was drawn up to prohibit these substances. At its earliest stages, this agreement involved nearly 50 nations, but this number has since risen to almost 200. Thankfully, the treaty has been successful, and the signs are good that the ozone layer will one day be restored. Having said that, the results won't entirely be seen for a while yet. As ozone expert Peter Null Levelt explained in a 2012 NASA statement, we still have an ozone hole at the South Pole, but we expect that it will recover by 2050 to 2070. This is undoubtedly good news, but Antarctica has other threats to deal with too. There are the gargantuan breaches appearing in its ice, of course, but there's also climate change. The effects of this process aren't being felt equally all over the continent, simply because it's so vast. In certain areas, though, global warming is already wreaking havoc. For one, there are certain animal groups on the icy continent that are seeing their habitats devastated by climate change. And ecosystems are delicate things, meaning that when one species is threatened, there are inevitably consequences for another. Consider Antarctica's melting ice. Its depletion has reduced the growth of algae, which in turn,
has impacted the krill that feed on the plant material. This means the Adelie penguins that rely on krill for food have also suffered. And to make things worse, this isn't the species' only concern. Weather patterns have also changed in the parts of Antarctica, where the flightless birds have tended to nest. Emperor penguins, too, are in a precarious position these days. The threat to Antarctica's native species is very real, then. But the implications of the continent's ice melting could be even more severe globally. Antarctica plays a very important role in heat regulation across the entire planet, you see. And if its systems alter and eventually even break down, the consequences will be felt across the whole world. So, should we be worried about the vast chasm that appeared in Antarctica's ice in 2017? Well, according to science, we humans should be more concerned by the prospect of the entire West Antarctic ice sheet melting than by any other smaller breaches. As you may expect, this vast section of the continent is made up of a huge amount of ice. And if this were to thaw, then the oceans of the Earth would see absolutely immense rises. So, climate change is a real problem for Antarctica and, by extension, for the rest of the world too. But while any potential issues that could arise from global warming are certainly of concern, can we blame this process for that massive chasm in the ice? It turns out that it's not quite as simple as that. The hole was discovered in the Lazarev Sea back in the middle of September 2017, and it caught experts by surprise. September is a winter month in Antarctica, so by rights the ice present in the continent should be at its strongest at that time. Somehow, though, this enormous section had disappeared, leaving the specialists understandably startled. And the gap in the ice was discovered by an elite team of scientists. Some of them worked for the Southern Ocean Carbon and Climate Observations and Modeling Project, SOCOM, while others hailed from the University of Toronto. To make their remarkable discovery, the group utilized a robotic float capable of navigating beneath thick ice. Then, after the device had detected the giant chasm, the experts analyzed satellite imagery of the area to confirm its findings. These aerial images of the hole really clarified its sheer enormity over 29,000 square miles in surface area. And the vast expanse of inexplicably melted ice was naturally of great interest to scientists. University of Toronto physics professor Kent Moore, for example, remarked on the hole and its many surprising facets. Speaking to National Geographic magazine in 2017, he said, in the depths of winter, for more than a month, we've had this area of open water. And given that the winter period in Antarctica is generally a time in which ice reigns supreme, you can understand Moore's interest in the unlikely chasm. At its greatest extent, the continent hosts roughly 7 million square miles of marine ice. To give you some perspective, that's about twice the size of the continental United States. But as we can see from the hole discovered in the Lazarev Sea, sometimes breaches can appear in this solid, frozen layer. Such chasms are known to the scientific community as polynias, and they've been of great interest for decades now. After all, it seems a little strange that such a vast amount of ice can melt during Antarctica's winter months. Conditions should be at their coldest during this time of year, but openings appear all the same. It was found, too, that this particular Antarctic hole had appeared over an underwater ridge called the Maud Rise. The gap itself, then, became known as the Maud Rise Polynia. And after its discovery, the feature started to expand at a rapid rate. Just a month later, in fact, the void had grown to more than eight times its initial size. Then, as Antarctica entered into the summertime, the ice surrounding the Maud Rise Polynia started to melt, leaving the gap to disappear as it blended with the liquid seas of the area. Still, while the hole had been a fascinating anomaly for scientists to pore over, it wasn't totally without precedent. Going back several decades to 1974, an even bigger chasm had been discovered in the Antarctic ice. This was the Weddell Polynia, which was roughly similar in size to Oregon. The gargantuan hole had appeared in winter, that year then disappeared again in summer. The cycle then repeated for a couple of years before the Polyna seemingly vanished for good in 1976. Polynias are extremely rare features, and scientists don't often get the opportunity to observe and study them. But in 2016, the year before the Maud Rise Polynia showed up, a NASA satellite detected one appearing once again in the Weddell Sea. 
And, naturally, this was a source of tremendous interest for experts hoping to understand how and why these holes exist. As NASA CI specialist Alec Petty remarked in a statement, while smaller and shorter lived than the 1970s Weddell Polynia, it's still an unusual and important phenomenon. It allows a significant amount of heat to escape to the winter atmosphere, where air temperatures are thought to hover around minus 4 degrees Fahrenheit. Polynias such as the ones that appeared in the Weddell Sea in the 70s and in 2016 can usually be attributed to either persistent air circulation patterns above the frozen ocean or currents within it. Then, once these gaps are opened, a self-sustaining cycle develops. As warmer water rises from the sea, it releases heat into the atmosphere. The water then descends as it cools, being replaced by new warmer currents from below. This process prevents new ice from forming. And although scientists are starting to understand the broad processes behind Polynias, questions remain. Former University of Alaska Fairbanks geophysicist Willie Weeks succinctly summarized these areas of interest in a statement released by NASA's Earth Observatory. There, he queried, why was the Weddell Polynia present in the 1970s and then absent until its recent reappearance? Weeks continued, did the Weddell Polynia occur before 1970, and does this mean we are looking at a periodic process that shows itself about every 40 years? If there were earlier occurrences, there is no record of them. There's still much to be answered, then, but knowing a little about the 2017 Maud Rise Polynia could help. For starters, there were several differences between the Maud Rise Polynia and the Weddell one that showed up the year before. The Polynia from 2016 was smaller, for instance, and it disappeared after a shorter amount of time. That was because the 2017 example was created by a more significant heat cycle. Altogether, though, experts aren't quite sure what the Maud Rise Polynia's significance is for Antarctica as a whole. Will it have an impact on the continent's climate? Did it show up because of the impact of global warming? Ultimately, we just don't know for sure. More work will be necessary before these riddles can be properly solved. Having said that, one prominent expert has expressed their opinion that Polynias do, in fact, have an impact on the environment. This person is Diana Francis, a researcher with New York University Abu Dhabi. And it was Francis who led the investigation into the Maud Rise Polynia, so she's certainly in a strong position to offer her thoughts on its implications. Speaking in a statement, Francis remarked, once opened, the Polynia works like a window through the sea ice, transferring huge amounts of energy during winter between the ocean and the atmosphere. Because of their large size, mid-sea Polynias are capable of impacting the climate regionally and globally as they modify the oceanic circulation. Francis went on to highlight the importance of figuring out what exactly causes Polynias to emerge. Though we may understand the actions behind the phenomenon, the reason that these processes get underway is still unknown. She said, it is important for us to identify the triggers for their occurrence, to improve their representation in the models and their effects on climate. And although further study will be needed to confirm it, a theory behind these triggers has been put forward. Basically, it suggests that significant cyclones are behind the emergence of Polynias. As Francis herself explained, cyclonic winds drag the floating sea ice in opposite directions around the cyclone center, creating the opening. After this opening has appeared in the ice, then, both the ocean and the atmosphere keep it around. Francis continued, once the area is free of ice, ocean dynamics bring warmer water near the surface and prevent the formation of new ice, sustaining the polynia over a longer period of time. So, if cyclones are responsible for triggering the emergence of polynias, then we can say that global warming may increase their frequency in the years to come. That's because more cyclones can be expected in Antarctica as the climate heats up. And, more to the point, they may be stronger. Francis explained, it is speculated that polynia events may become more frequent because these areas will be more exposed to more intense cyclones. Previous studies have shown that under warmer climate conditions, polar cyclone activity will intensify and the extratropical cyclones track will move toward Antarctica, which could decrease the sea ice extent and make polynia areas closer to the cyclone's formation zone. Ultimately, 
more work will be necessary to understand Polynias and what they mean for the future of Antarctica. That means scientists will have to use all the methods and technologies at their disposal, with pictures from space potentially playing a vital role. Anne Francis seems to agree, as she's remarked, satellite images are a powerful tool to help us understand such a complex system, where interactions between atmosphere ice ocean take on full meaning. Thanks for watching, and don't forget to like and subscribe.